I made some circles with my fingers and put them on a smile for now I see much much clearer I can't turn on all of these colors now and after the rain everything seems brighter well, one of the things we have to do before I can uh, beach Tiare is come down at low tide and check the area where I'm going to beach Tiare. Um, I need to check to make sure that there, are n there is nothing that's going to hurt or damage the hulls as she comes down when the tide drops. Um, this normally just means walking around at low tide and checking for uh, larger stones or stones, bits of metal sticking out. Um, kind of hard rubbish that is generally washed up on shore. Back in the cabin, need to sort out what exactly I need to take tomorrow. Um, if I get anything wrong or I miss something, then I'm going to be able, it's going to be a waste of time. I, I can't do the job, so I have to double check that I have everything required. So, ready for tomorrow and beaching. Um, up here at about 8 o'clock, um, takes about 20 minutes to get around the island. Um, we'll hit it just after high tide hopefully. There's about a 20 minutes delay, or maybe 15 minutes delay between uh, what the tide tables show or the tide graphs show and uh, where we are. Um, so 9.40, or sorry 8.40 we'll be beaching um, and then we'll just wait for um, a few hours for the tide to drop a wee bit before I can jump overboard and start wading through it and cleaning the hull. Tiare draws 16 from the waterline up to the top of her mast. On the way it's just miserable, it's raining and pouring, um, it's just not a nice day for this but I don't have a choice, I do need to beach Tiara, I need to change the oils in the sonic drives and I need to do a few ding repairs as well, so I just don't have a choice, I've got to do it today. Um, the tides are just perfect for getting a whole day's worth of work done on her during the day, during the daylight hours, which is unusual. Um, so it only happens, I don't know, maybe a dozen times a year, I guess, where I can get the perfect conditions, and then only then I can only do it when I'm not busy. I don't have um, I don't have tours coming in, so this worked out really well. Tiara only draws one meter. Well, oh, we're here now. Um, must be about nine o'clock, I think. Um, I don't have a don't have a clock on me. Well, it's on the phone, which is what I'm using to take this video. Um, okay, so it's raining. I've got a couple of hours. Probably got three hours, two and a half hours before the water's down far enough. So what I'll do is there's no wind, so I'm going to put the side covers up and give some shelter from the rain. Um, open up the sides and uh, clean up the cockpit. That's it there. Nice and simple. Kind of large which is what we want. If we're not careful, it does fill up a little bit of water, um, but that's only because I haven't put the, um, the inboard stays up correctly, the inboard ties up correctly. Right, before I start all this mess organising, I'm going to um, put the kettle on and have a cup of tea and uh, catch up with a few emails that have come in this morning. <laughs> Cheers guys. Ah, nothing like an instant coffee, eh? Here we go. Already beached. Two motors drop down the ladder and the uh, the sonar as well. That normally lifts up on the sand, but just uh, well, it's still uh, too deep for me gumboots at that end, so I just uh, swung down from there. Um, 
these are the areas here under the under this tape here that I need to um, put some dings here, which I'm really going to deal with soon. Then I'm just going to give the uh, the hole a bit of a clean. Yeah, still got some, a little bit of growth. It'll come off easy enough by the looks of that. Right, that's uh, two motors emptied of oil. Um, the port side motor was, as I would expect, it was nice and golden clear. I really, almost don't really want to uh, refill it, but I know it's been a number of years, so I think it's a good idea to refill it anyway. That side there was a mess. It was obviously had water in it. There's probably a leak up on the seal there, possibly. Um, so anyway, Christmas time, I'll take those out and um, yeah, give them a, a big overhaul then. Um, just do one at a time, drop them into the dinghy and take them to shore somewhere and uh, rent a room or something just like you're doing your part. Right, here we are, low tide. Yay. So it's all um, coming in from now on. So I've got a couple of hours um, left, so I'm going to do a couple of um, uh, ding repairs close to the water line. The other ones I can do um, in the dinghy or the kayak, actually, they're not very big, but um, the ones close to the water line I've got to do now. Here's my finger. Got one there to do, and there's another little bit just in here, which I'll just peel off and put that there. I think that's the only two that are really close to the water line that I want to be concerned with at the moment. Right, I'm debating with myself whether I want to walk an anchor out there. Um, so when the tide's coming in, I'm not going to drift further up. Uh, means I don't have to. Uh, that way, I can pull myself out and off the um, off the sand, off the beach here. Um, it's a sensible thing. I've always done that before, and it does kind of make it easy. Um, but then it's also a hassle because I've got to lift the anchor up. So it's um, 33 k's, but I think I'll play. I think I'll play safe, and uh, I'll drop the anchor out there. I'll walk it out now, actually. Um, I'll show you the anchor I'm going to use. All right, we've got two Rockners. We've got the 33, which is our kind of day anchor and kedge, I guess. And then on the other side, we've got the, uh, the larger 40. Uh, it's a 33 I'm going to put down. Uh, we'll just drop it off, and then I'll walk it out there. I think I'll do that now. That's what I'll do. All right, this is a lot of rope. Uh, it's actually fancy climbing rope, I think. Came with the boat, but uh, we got caught in a uh, very nasty swell that came into Marina and uh, in Malaysia, uh, Penang actually, and had to uh, tie everything we've got, and it got ruined at that stage, unfortunately. So anyway, I'm going to tie this on. And there's enough length. Here. Okay. Fish. Ooh, stretchy. Right. One anchor out there. Nice taut rope. And wrapped around the winch there. A few turns that'll help me pull it off when we need to. Now, time to get out of this rain and uh, go fill up those uh, the oil from the sonic drives. Two litre water bottle with its bottom cut off there, filling up with oil. Well, slowly going down with oil. And another one on the other side, somewhere down by that block of wood. It's uh, been an awful slow process trying to get this oil um, down into the tails. Um, I knew it would be because you're trying to force a lot of quite a, a viscous kind of liquid down a small pipe, and the air's got to, as it goes in, it you know the air's got to be displaced out, and it's going to come up in little bubbles, which it is doing, but it's taking a heck of a long time. Um, I know when the guys do it professionally, they have a little pump which they pump it up, um, which is what I should have done actually, but I don't have a pump. Well, here we are, next day. I'm back in my uh, usual mooring, but unfortunately the uh, the bridge is a little too close, which means the shallow water, which is just down there, is a little too close. Um, <laughs> we changed the mooring ropes around the other day because of the, uh, they'd frayed through and they're a couple of meters longer, which means we've pushed back a couple of meters um, and we're a bit too close to the shallow. So 
so I'm going to move the boat and deal with the uh, mooring boys or the mooring ropes uh, later on. However, tomorrow we have a group of four plus or so young girls coming over to cook their lunches on board, which is what they want to do. Um, and so we're going to go over to there, just over there, somewhere there, I think, uh, where there's a little um, huminoiki or a sea station, they call it here, um, where we can moor up and they can in, come on board and enjoy their lunch. And they're going to cook their lunch on board actually. Um, normally we'd have it out here but the forecast is for a lot of wind tomorrow and I don't really want them to get them on the boat when it's um, it's difficult to get them on and off the boat when there's that much wind. So we'll go over there. Plus I also need to tidy up and uh, clean up the boat because it's still a mess after yesterday. I haven't had a chance to clean it yet. There it is, a mess. And that down there is no oil in the sonic drive, so I can't really use the motor. I might use it for a couple of minutes uh, just to help me get in, but other than that, I'm pretty well screwed. So, yep, here we go. Just going to have to do the best we can. Uh, this will be entertaining. I'm not going to video it because I won't have time. Well, I wasn't happy with the side of the dock I was on. I had an idea the wind was going to blow around from the other side. Um, so we, uh, we pushed it around. We've only got one motor, so turning circles is not easy in a small space. Um, but we got it right in the end. The day today, and it's just uh, just stunning. A little bit of wind, not 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 as much as was forecast. Um, the girls will be arriving really soon. There's six of them. They want to um, just spend a couple of hours on board and cook their lunch. And there they are. And because they were uh, moored up on the dock, um, there were no safety issues with being out on the mooring or anchor anywhere, so we could leave them to it. I just uh, I went home for a couple of hours and then came back um, to say goodbye. Um, absolutely fantastic group of people, young, positive, and they left the boat immaculate. It's actually cleaner than when I gave it to them. And it ended up being an absolutely stunning day, really beautiful. We could have been out in the mooring, but um, the weather forecast the day before was uh, was not so good. So, yeah, that's how it happens. Well, that's my second day of doing this. Uh, I'll show you what's involved in topping up my... Uh, my oil in my sonic drives, in my uh, drop down drives. It's a matter of doing this up and down. And what that does, way down in the bottom there, let's get the strip out of the way, way down in the bottom there, goes through at the top of the sonic drives. And uh, when I do this a few times, it just breaks the little air bubble that's down there and allows that little bubble to come to the surface. And then allows a little bubble of, or a little drop of oil to go down. And this is my second day of doing this. Yeah, I've only got another probably litre to go, I think, um, and then it's all done. Um, next time I'll do this, I'll do this another way. I'm so glad that the other motor got it done in about four hours. This one's taken two days. Well, here we go, it's getting dark now, and I haven't seen any bubbles coming up for um, quite a while now, so I reckon it's, um, I reckon it's, it's done. It's done, Steph. Well, here we are, miserable day. Um, we're just looking at, well, show you what we're looking at. We're looking at a whole lot of uh, rain and wind at the moment. Good day for an inside, inside job. We can drop an, a weight down on there, probably a big concrete block to keep everything low to the ground. Um, then at the end of it all, put another splice and um, shackle on there, which will then go to the big swivel we've got in our mooring boy. This lot here is, um, should be around about 100 meters of uh, 22 mil double braid fancy stuff uh, which we got a few years ago for the typhoons up here it's been through eight typhoons and it's had enough of its life we've seen it go just like a steel bar 
um, and it's done that many, many, many times and it's time to replace it um, as our main securing line, I guess. It's just, um, I wouldn't trust it anymore, it's just got no stretch left in it. Um, so it's good enough for our mooring rope. Essential equipment for any rope work is good music, um, all your, your whipping twines and your, your palms and your needles and whatnot, and of course uh, your wife's best kitchen knife. And there it is, finished product, without the whipping, but still good. Very happy with that. Uh, they get buried in the water so no one's going to see them, but still. Well, good morning. It's um, Sunday morning, beautiful sunny day. Um, the last Sunday was when I was doing the, um, the hatches. And again, it was a sunny day. Um, so we're starting to end in the sun, which is great. The, um, today's job is really just to deal with the... Um, those thimbles in the eyes, cut 20 meters of chain off what I've got here um, and put the shackles together on those. Uh, tomorrow I will drag the anchors off from them, we've got them on the beach at the moment and uh, put them together and then we'll take Tiare out and we'll head off over that way I think somewhere, um, put 80 meters or so and we've got a swivel on the end of this here or below there and we'll tie it all together and hopefully that will keep us um, probably away from the shore, which is just there. And the shallows are just uh, where that black boy is there, probably another few metres beyond that, close to the shore. Um, at the moment, the way things are, when the wind blows and it's a low tide, we're very close to the bottom, maybe just uh, 200 mil away. And if any swell comes up, um, then we're probably going to bang on the bottom. Well, thank you for watching the video this week. Um, next week's video will be about putting the mooring down, we've got another group of girls on board for lunch and uh, prepping up Tiare for a tour the following week, um, three nights aboard um, sailing around the western part of the inland sea. Until then, we'll catch you later.